Welcome to the Osimo Early Bird Podcast. It's your old pal Emac coming to you Friday night with some Saturday NBA action where we have five teams on the main slate, courtesy of the association. This will be a solo podcast once again, but I've gone through and written up the game, so we will go game by game, hitting all of the high notes. Remember, you can tune in at 11.15 Eastern, Saturday morning on the Osmo YouTube channel, and Adam and I will take a leisurely walk through each of the games. That'll probably take us, let's see, Laffy and... Josh would take two and a half hours to go through five games, so Adam and I will probably knock that out in an hour, hour and a half. But uh, come on in. We'll answer questions in the premium Slack chat, the YouTube uh, chat, etc. If you have not yet signed up for Osmo, what the heck are you waiting for? You can use the promo code EARLYBIRD to receive 50% off any one-month package at Osmo. All you have to go is to the Osmo main page, click in the upper left, the Join button select a monthly package you would like this does actually include the fantasy cruncher add-on when you go to checkout fill out your information the last field will be the promo code put in early bird all one word and you will get 50 percent off at checkout you'll get everything uh, that you sign up for in the package so if you were to pick the deluxe package you would get projections for mma nascar pga nhl nba everything. You get uh, articles, you get cheat sheets, you get uh, Alex himself, his player grade rankings, and for hockey, his line rankings, which have been invaluable. And you get access to Slack chat, where all the magic really takes place. So let's get into today's slate. We have a, uh, a nooner here. We've got an early game in New York City with the Knicks hosting the Sacramento Kings. That is literally going off at 12 p.m. Eastern. We will have projections for that, but that's a single game slate, so I'm not going to cover that at this moment, but uh, let's look at some back-to-backs. Those teams playing on Friday who are also going on Saturday are Washington. They are in Charlotte tonight. They will be in Minnesota on Saturday. We've got Charlotte hosting Washington tonight. Saturday, they will be in Milwaukee. And then we have five teams that are playing on Saturday that are also playing on Sunday. We have quite a robust Sunday slate. You will definitely get a uh, Fast Eddie Fear and Josh Engelman show on Sunday, as well as the DFS strategy show on Sunday. And then Saturday night, you get me and Fast Eddie be fair, uh, breaking down the five gamer in the hour up before lock. Uh, the five teams that are going on Sunday and Saturday, Phoenix is at Portland Saturday at Golden State Sunday. Milwaukee is hosting Charlotte Saturday. They're heading to San Antonio on Sunday. The Knicks, as we mentioned, are hosting Sacramento. They're off to Minnesota on Sunday. Minnesota hosting Washington Saturday, hosting the Knicks on Sunday. And then you have Atlanta going against Brooklyn on Saturday. And then they will be hosting the Pelicans on Sunday. Uh, Let's see here. Our first game, let's talk about Brooklyn and Atlanta. We've got Atlanta as four and a half point favorites. There's a 235 over under in this game. We have, uh, let's see, uh, over the last, since the beginning of February, that's going to be the time frame I'm referencing for all of these pace and defensive efficiency rating stats. But Brooklyn is 10th in defensive efficiency. Atlanta, a woeful 27th. As far as pace goes, Brooklyn is at nine and Atlanta is at 14. So as evidenced by the 235 over under, this should be an up-tempo game. We know that Amari Spellman is out with an ankle injury. He's likely going to be out for the remainder of the year. They have not made that call yet. Dwayne Dedman is dealing with a knee bruise. He is leaning towards doubtful, but they're holding out hope. He is a game-time decision, but do know that Tyler Zeller has been signed to a 10-day contract by the Hawks. For the Nets, we have Shabazz Napier has been ruled out already on Friday. He will be out for personal reasons. And Trevion Graham is dealing with the sore back, so we'll have to see what happens. But the Nets do have a cast of thousands. Uh, Players that we can look to in this one, Alex Lynn is definitely in play once again. Yes, it's a wild roller coaster when we go with Alex Lynn. But we like Biggs going against Brooklyn. And as long as Dwayne Dedman is out at 5,000 on DraftKings and 4,700, On FanDuel, Alex Lynn is a fine play. We've also got John Collins, who has seen his minute or his well his minutes as well as his price come down a little bit as he's been dealing with uh, illness. But he is at 7,200 on DraftKings and 7,900 on FanDuel. He works well in this matchup, regardless of the status of Deadman. But he does get a boost 
if Deadman is out. Trey Young should see north of 33 minutes in this one. He's a nice tournament option, but he's priced up a little bit at 8,200 on DraftKings and 8,300 on FanDuel. But with this being a 10-team player period, he definitely is in the mix. Yes, he is probably number two in the rookie of the year race, but he's put up some phenomenal assist numbers lately as they've really let him take the reins on this team. Uh, Tarian Prince, bit of a discount dandy. He missed two games uh, out on paternity leave, and then he got bounced early for uh, fouls in his last matchup, or was it two technicals? I don't recall that, but uh, he's in the mix on both DraftKings and FanDuel. If we take a look at the, the Nets, Spencer Dinwiddie projects similarly from a point per dollar value as D'Angelo Russell. However, he is significantly discounted on DraftKings and somewhat discounted on FanDuel. So you do have uh, him cutting in a little bit to what we became used to for D'Angelo Russell's breakout performance over the last two months when Dinwiddie was out with some thumb surgery. But uh, with Dinwiddie back, it's uh, no guarantee that D'Angelo Russell is going to do well. And he's still sort of priced for the, the production levels we became accustomed to. Jared Allen. Going against the Hawks, we do like that. At 4,800, he is in play on DraftKings. I don't know that I want to give up the center position to him on FanDuel. And then one other item of note, don't pair him on the same team with Ed Davis. If you're going to do the mass multi-entry, set up a rule there in Fantasy Cruncher or whatever optimizer you are using that you don't play Davis and Jared Allen on the same team. The issue with that is they've played about a minute and a half, uh, at least coming into two games ago, they played a minute and a half together the entire season. Probably it was eight possessions. I'm guessing that was both of them were in at various points near the end of the game for rebounding purposes during free throws. That's not going to give us a lot of fantasy upside. And then you've got uh, Rodians Karuks is a bit of a kind of a low tier option here, but he has been announced that he will be starting at power forward for the remainder of the season. This is the net. So hopefully that at least lasts through Saturday's games. We will see moving on to our next game. This is the barn burner. It's the early night hammer. You've got the Washington Wizards up at Minnesota. Again, the Washington game uh, is just starting to wrap up now in the fourth quarter against Charlotte. So uh, there have been no in-game injuries or dings just yet, but keep an eye out for that. These two teams faced on last Sunday, and they put up, let's see here, uh, 256 points in regulation. Wow. Wow. I, I, that was just, it was phenomenal. I was watching that one. The Wizards just kept pouring it on. Wizards, I believe, scored 135, uh, which would give uh, 121 to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, from a pace perspective, the Wizards are second since the beginning of February, and Minnesota is 15th. From a defensive rating perspective, they're both bottom two teams. Number 29 for the Wizards and number 30 for the Timberwolves. So we're really going to want to look to both sides on this one. Uh, If we look at Minnesota, particularly we want Carl Anthony Towns. We are paying a premium for him, but this is an outstanding matchup against the Wizards. I really like Dario Saric as a discount option, a differentiation play, if you will. He is 3,900 on DraftKings, 4,300 on FanDuel, takes care of one of your power forward spots. And then Taj Gibson, DK only, but even him coming off the bench at 4,000 even is an intriguing tournament option. He does have 25-plus fantasy point upside in this one against the Wizards who play fast, don't play defense, and don't rebound very well. Um, Gee, I probably should mention Jeff Teague. He has been scuffling a little bit, but we do know that he has 40 fantasy point upside when things go his way. And at 5,800 on DraftKings and 6,700 on FanDuel, he is very much in consideration. From the Washington side, we'll kind of have to see what's going to happen. Uh, Who played heavier minutes on uh, Friday night? Did Did anyone get dinged up? Beal is going to be the best play, but we're definitely uh, going to be paying the premium for him. So I'm looking toward the collection of wings on the Washington side. Uh, In this order, I like Ariza, Portis, Parker, and then Jeff Green. Um, If anyone gets gets, uh, dinged up a little bit on Friday, we might see Sam Decker or uh, Thomas Bryant get a few extra minutes. But those are the guys that I would look for. Uh, You can play Sadoransky. You can play Beal. But uh, I would look to the front court first. Moving on to our third game, we have Boston in L.A. taking on 
the Lakers. We have uh, no line in this game yet. So we don't know the status of Kyrie Irving. We suspect he's going to play, but he's been dealing with that bruised quad. We know that uh, Ingram is probably going to be out. We know that Kuzma is probably going to be out, but they have not been ruled out yet. Uh, Kuzma is uh, dealing with an ankle injury and Ingram is a shoulder injury, and they were both out of the last game. So we'll have to find out what happens there. And we don't know what's going to go on with LeBron's minutes. Now, right now, the Lakers are down to less than a 1% chance of making the playoffs. So I don't think we're going to see the robust 40 minutes from LeBron. We may see 30 in this game, 35, uh, because he doesn't want to give up. And it all depends if he and Kyrie are going to show out against each other. So that's going to make that interesting. Looking to the rest of the Celtics here, the Lakers we're going to have to wait for and see who's in or out. We should have some more news uh, after tomorrow's shoot around before we need to make any assessments. But uh, check in with the DFS strategy show at 1115 Eastern again with Adam and I. Hopefully that news will uh, have bubbled up by that point. But with going back to the Celtics here uh, on DraftKings, my order of preference based upon their price and potential production is Al Horford, Tatum, Marcus Morris, Gordon Hayward, Smart, and then Jalen Brown. On FanDuel, it's a little bit different of an order. I'm going to go with Tatum, Horford, Morris, Smart, Brown, and then Hayward. They're all in play, but who you choose is going to change what you do with your other positions and your other players. So they are all definitely, again, in the player pool, their prices are a little bit better on DK, but uh, they're definitely in the mix on FanDuel. Uh, let's see. We got two more games here. Again, this is just going to be a brief bolus of information coming at you fast. Uh, finishing off the Lakers, uh, again, no line in that game, but uh, Boston has a ten, number 10 defensive rating in the Lakers 28 since the beginning of February. And for pace, it is Boston at number 16 and the Lakers at number six. Our next game is Charlotte at Milwaukee. Charlotte, again, will be on the back-to-back. Bismack Biombo uh, did play some on Friday. He's been dealing with a sore knee. This is a back-to-back, so we don't know what, exactly what's going to happen with Tony Parker. And then uh, Dante DiVincenzo has uh, resurfaced from that heel injury that has kept him out for the last two months. Back-to-back, I don't know if he'll play. It's not really going to be significant minutes either way but uh, just be aware that there's those guys are uh, are lurking from uh, injury concerns here with uh, Char- or with Milwaukee you've got uh, George Hill who's dealing with a groin injury and Sterling Brown who's got a wrist injury there's no update on these guys they didn't play in the last couple games they're unlikely to play for this one but they have not yet been ruled out now as we mentioned the Hornets are the other team that played on Friday here tough tough matchup against Milwaukee. They are 11 and a half point underdogs on the road. There still is a 230 over under. This is because uh, Charlotte, not that good at defense and uh, Milwaukee tends to play a little bit quick. So if I'm looking at Milwaukee and them being the double digit favorites, I think I really only want to leave Giannis for tournament play. He's probably going to get about 32 minutes. That seems to be about where he tops out because the team has just been winning and they have not been needing him uh, to uh, complete these games. Even on their, in their two losses that they had in Phoenix and in Utah um, when he was dealing in that sore knee uh, coming off that uh, Sacramento game on their West Coast swing, he played 32 and 34 minutes in those losses. So those were winnable games, but they didn't push him out there. He didn't play in the overtime of that Sacramento game. So what I'm saying here is upside could be capped, particularly at his price, 11,300 on DraftKings, 12,100 on FanDuel. However, Middleton, Bledsoe, and Brooke Lopez are solid options in all formats, both slight, both sites with a slight lean towards their DK salaries, but I would have no problem playing any of those three uh, in especially on this 10-game slate. I wouldn't mind playing all three of them in the same lineup uh, on either side. Uh, it's just that you're giving up your, your center spot with Brolo. You may want to do that, um, but that's always uh, can drive uh, people's decisions a little bit uh, differently depending on how they want to build the remainder of their lineup. This takes us to the last game of the night. Yikes. I love it. We have Phoenix at Portland. 
and we've got so looking to Phoenix, they are 12 and a half point underdogs on the road in Portland. The set game has a 230 over under. Both teams are in the bottom third since the beginning of February from a defensive efficiency rating, and both teams are in the top third from a pace perspective. So that's why we get the 230 over under. Uh, Elia Kobo is down in the G League. There is no word if and when. TJ Warren is going to be returning from his ankle injury. And then Evan Turner was out, played in one, maybe two games. He only got 10 minutes in one for sure. And then he was out on Thursday for personal uh, reasons. This was the overtime game on Thursday night that Portland lost at home to the Thunder. Uh, but these guys will have had 48 hours of recovery. This is the third time these two teams are matching up. The Blazers lead the series 2 to nothing. They're averaging 114 points per game with the Suns checking in at just 96. Now we do need to remember we have newer players on both sides of this one, particularly with Kelly Oubre and Tyler Johnson now on the Suns and Ennis Cantor recently joining the Portland Trailblazers. If we look uh, at Phoenix first, Booker, Ayton, and Kelly Oubre are giving us a uh, not much of a price break on either side, but uh, this is a nice matchup for uh, Phoenix, we've got the one issue is if depending on how many uh, games you're, you're or lineups you're making, how many teams you're playing, what size your player pool is, if this is a late slate, etc. If we look at this just from a main slate perspective, Booker, Aiton, Ubre, they're all kind of right on that edge of slipping out of the point per dollar threshold that's keeping them in in kind of a a cluster. Uh, your core type of multi-entry player pool. Now, if you're doing a game stack, absolutely. Those are the three guys you want to look to. We'll talk about some of the cheapies in a second. But uh, just just know that uh, th these guys are kind of right on the edge. So ideally, I'd probably want to play two of them. My, my thinking on this is we only have 10 teams in action. And if they're going to uh, stay in the game and do well, then it's probably going to be on the backs of this trio. So any two of them are good. I'd lean towards... Uh, Booker first, Ubre second, and then Aiton third, just because, you know, Yusuf Nurkic is a pain to deal with. And uh, Aiton, not the best defensive center, and he tends to get in foul trouble from time to time against the uh, more nimble fellow bigs. He's a rookie. He'll get better at uh, keeping his hands to himself, but I could see that being a little bit of an issue. Um, the bench players for the Suns, they're the wild cards. They're going to be uh, just lineup filler. Uh, at that point. Again, a Kobo is, is not there, so you can look to Bridges or, you know, even Tyler Johnson, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, Jamal Crawford, Portland's not that far from Seattle. He's uh, winding down his career at 38 years old, so who knows? Maybe friends and family will head down from Rainier Beach, uh, Seattle, or he went to Rainier Beach High School in Seattle, same school as Nate Robinson. But, uh, yeah, it's a little tougher here to see what's going to happen on the main slate with these backup Sons. Again, Adam and I will go over this in more detail. He likes to break down all the rotations and uh, figure out what has happened with past history and what is going on with uh, certain styles of play. So we may be able to find a diamond in the rough there. From the Portland side, Lillard and Nurkic and McCollum are fantastic plays on DraftKings. We're pretty much playing, paying a uh, premium for all of them on FanDuel. Lillard is 8,800 on DK, 10-3 on FanDuel. Now I could see from a lineup construction perspective on FanDuel going with Lillard, going away from Giannis and then, you know, upgrading uh, somewhere else or maybe even two mid-tier positions. That I think is a very fine uh, angle to approach FanDuel tournaments. Nurkic on DK 7,000. That's going to be incredibly hard to pass, but just remember Ennis Cantor is still in the mix here. Uh, Cantor is actually in play on both sites, all slates, all formats. He's 4,000 on DraftKings and he is 4,400 on FanDuel. And that makes for an intriguing punt option. And a lot of players are not uh, going to put both of those centers in the same lineup on DraftKings. Obviously you cannot do that on FanDuel because you only get one center, but that is something we talked about a little bit on, or Josh and, and uh, I think Lafay talked about it on the DFS strategy show Thursday morning. So um, looking for unique construction, is what we want to do on these short slates, particularly that late night slate 
on Saturday. CJ McCollum's going to be a differentiation option on FanDuel. He's $8,000. That's going to be a tall order for him to take care of that price tag. At 6100 on uh, DraftKings, he kind of becomes the pivot to Lillard if you want to get some action on their backcourt. But uh, I'm suspecting the herd is going to be on Lillard. You could always look to McCollum. It's a good matchup for both of them. And then uh, rounding out the remainder of the Trailblazers of note, you've got Mo Harkless, you've got Rodney Hood, and you've got Al Farouk Aminu. Their prices are a little different on the different sites, so they all have merit. The thing we don't know is what's going to happen with Evan Turner. Now, if he's in, I find it hard to believe he's going to play more than 10 or 12 minutes because he's still working back from his layoff. Um, He still could be away from the team for personal reasons we don't know for sure yet. And then uh, your absolute wild card, Seth Curry, minimum price, darn near everywhere. Um, If he gets mop-up duty, uh, all of a sudden you could see him with 15, 20 fantasy points, and that could be a differentiation play uh, definitely on the late slate and to a lesser extent on the main slate or if you're going for some sort of game stack. um, And and perhaps you say, all right, well, what happens if the Suns really get blown out? Who's probably going to get – or pardon me, if, yeah, if the Suns get blown out, who's going to get a, a little bit of the mop-up duty there for the Trailblazers? You know, could it be Cantor? Could it be Curry? Yeah, absolutely. So you'll want to check that out. So that's going to get us through our five-game slate. Again, we are coming up on a stretch here starting uh, – actually, we started today on Friday where we have 17 days of uh, basically between six and nine games per day. Now – Obviously, tomorrow it's a five-game main slate, but there is that that uh, that Saturday, Saturday nooner. Um, but Sunday we have, uh, I believe it's nine games on Sunday. They're going off in, in two different sections. I believe there is a, well, let me just look it up right now because it's uh, worth worth hearing because we're going to have some content for it. So Sunday there, uh, once again, there's a nooner on Sunday. We'll have projections for that. There is a 3.30 pair of games. That would be Toronto at Miami and it would be uh, Indiana at Philadelphia. And then you've got six games on the main slate, assuming FanDuel at least starts their main slate at six. DraftKings most likely will. you got two at six, one at seven, two at eight, and one at 8.30. We will definitely have live before lock with uh, Fast City Fear and Josh Engelman on that Sunday slate. So you'll definitely want to tune into that. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the best way to get notified when we're going live. Hit that little notification bell, and it will send you a little message whenever we are broadcasting. With that, gamers, I'm going to get on out of her. You can catch Adam and I at 11.15 Saturday morning on the Osmo YouTube channel. You can follow me at EMACDFS. It is Osmo underscore C-O-M over there on Twitter. And with that, gamers, good luck.